morning. Morning. Trying to make a fire. Oops. Time for coffee. Can't start without coffee. So, just a few minutes and it will be good. Okay guys, Serengeti show lifetime and uh, we are right on the sand river. I just had my second cup of coffee so I'm ready to go now and a beautiful morning so we're the only guys out here. We had a lovely night here fly camping and out early just after sunrise and we're gonna see if we can pick up some of the cats and some of the bird life on this riverine forest and stunning place. Come along, let's see what we can find. Guys, beautiful buffalo herd. It's uh, a very nice indicator that the stability here in the north has returned and very, very good to see a breeding herd of two, 200, 300 maybe. And um, of course they'll be a bit skittish. And as we cross the Karongo, we will come up the other side and, and have a look where there's buffalo there's generally speaking some line around so let's see if we can pick them up in the tall grass or not let's just cross this karongo first Easy. 
big bull here in front. Just across the second one. Some toppy running here in front of us. All the toppy youngsters are getting their horns now. They also have synchronized birthing, carving, so they're all the same age. Let's see if we can get a better view of that herd, although they're moving on. rocky here yeah, so we're gonna see how far we can safely go and if not it's just one of those that we will have to this grass looks a little bit better the last thing you want to do is hit your car diff on the rock and you can't go anywhere beautiful toppy we haven't really discussed toppy but very it's the same thing as the tetsubi that you find in southern Africa. Very sharp, effective horns and um, it's fast and it has a lot of stamina for running so hard to bring down for line so also very alert. Big bull at the back there, it's a massive buffalo. Give them a little bit of a wider berth, get them to relax a bit. They start facing us, facing the danger, and they all work together to protect the herd. And it's the only defense mechanism the buffalo can use is their strength and weight and very effective use of their horns for protection. And they'll probably slowly approach us to make sure the females and the young are safe. Here they're running towards us on the left. It's so beautiful to see. It's a big bull approaching us here. His head held high. feel vulnerable down in the Korongo so they want to come up, come past us to the top of the hill where they and, uh, getting a little bit nervous there. But we'll see. They'll probably stick together. It's very rare for them to split a herd. Go around us ahead. Beautiful, beautiful buffalo. The breeding herds are really, really impressive. It's, we normally see the old Dugger boys, but this is a very structured, productive herd of buffalo and very good number. Here's an old bull there standing. 
next to the tree in the shade and he's not even bothered really. He's seen it all. Warm ears. Don't mess with that guy. It's just confidence. Very confident bull. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if there's some, something lying around, but let's see. Oh, there's a lion dead ahead, you know. That's why I tell you the lions are never far from buffalo. Right between the two trees, the two males walking. Let's see if we can come catch up with them. Ah, Serengeti never disappoints, you know. And it's, it's amazing how, how often one thing leads to the other, you know. And that's why it's good to know behavior and um, what would be feeding of what. And these lions might be a bit skittish but we'll definitely go and have a look. It's two males. They might have fed on a, bull, on a buffalo earlier but um, let's have a look. Okay so we're going to leave the buffalo and just show you the lion and uh, it's just such a classic Serengeti thing. I just don't want to drive straight into them. I'll just give them a little bit of a gap. See if they're skittish or if they're within their territory, if they're comfortable. And then we will manage the manage it from there. Yeah, there's definitely some vultures, so I, I think they either both. Getting rid of some excess, having a a poo there, and must mean they must have digested throughout the evening, and it must it means they must have fed perhaps late afternoon yesterday, and uh, let's see where where the vultures go down. Let's just catch up to them first. There's a Karonga we have to cross. Guys, today we're going birding. Such nice uh, riverine forest here, right next to camp, and we've already heard a few very nice birds. But one that we really want to see is the tarakau. I think it's pronounced scarlows or scarlows tarakau. You only find it here, and then on the forest on the edge of Lake Tanganyika, which is a long way from here. Apparently, this population is unique. And you only find them in this uh, quiet, dense, riverine forest of the northern Serengeti. So let's go have a look. The thing that makes it really hard with Tarakau is they always sit right in the middle of the tree and quite fairly high. Um, it's hard to get them out on the open. It's hard to get a decent shot so that we can show you how pretty this bird is. But 
we will give it our best shot. We have to be quiet. All of us have to be really, really quiet. Have to lift our feet. So we don't make any noise. Otherwise we'll be walking the whole day. There's one, there's one, there's one, there's one, there's one, there's one. It's not easy to find these birds. It's a lot more difficult to actually get a clear shot of it. But he's sitting very nicely there on a... There we go. Definitely a Scalo's than how to pronounce it, Darakal. Looks a lot like the Nisner Luri. It's the way we call them in South Africa and also with a green crest and this one's got very nice red around the eyes. Wow. Ah oh, there it goes. You can see the red under the wing. It's very distinctive of these tarakals, it's bright, bright red when it flies. They're so smart these things, they always sit on the back side of the tree, so as you get to the tree they're on the... But this one gave us a really nice shot. Yeah, and that's camp life guys. Never bored, never a dull moment, and you can bird anywhere, any time of day, which is really awesome. And now we can make noise again. Yeah, you got the Tarakal. Hey. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah, not easy, but... That thing moves all the time. Yeah, finally got it. Yes. Well done. Okay, guys, we're catching up to these two males, and it looks like they're marking territory and on, on patrol. And, uh, wow, it's always so exhilarating bumping into lines that are active and on the move. And we're going to just put ourselves in the path and then let's see what they are up to. But you can just see their back sticking out, the tall grass. And wow, they are magnificent giants. Let's have a look. See some ribs sticking out. So it means that they. to do with a meal. Beautiful, the buffalo is still at the back there. This guy's mane is a bit like my hair, a bit thin on, on the top, but uh, Wow, look at that guy, that's so beautiful. So again, he has the choice how far he wants to walk past us. And powerful animal. 280 kilograms.
terms of muscle. they might find some shade to lie down. Marking territory on the right under the tree, but well, no, they've definitely had a big meal. You can see how full their stomachs are. So probably finished a little buffalo. Today we're going to look at something a little bit strange. So if you look at this piece of old tree, what are you thinking? What do you think? What could it be? Why does it look so funny? So let me tell you. Every animal, well as humans, we have two hands and two thumbs, which means we can hold something. And we are, don't just have one, we have two, so that's really, really handy. Most animals don't have these, so what do they do if they have an itch? Or they feel like scratching? Now, this little piece of wood is a perfect scratching pole for elephant. So here you can scratch your the side, then you can scratch your bum if you want. And there's a scratching place for every size. The little elephant can scratch here at the bottom, the big elephant can scratch their tummies on top, so it's perfect, you know. That's in the bush. Animals are really, really clever. Never forget that. Okay guys, remember you can watch all the Kids Corners on a playlist on YouTube, on our channel, so subscribe, ask your mom and dad to help you, and then enjoy it. He's been through the walls this this mile. See that the interaction of this bond they have and the many fights that they had to fight together to keep the territory. And sure. Beautiful lines. We just go around a little bit. Might have a little growl. Don't stick out the camera too far. So, these guys are still wild. There's nothing tame about Serengeti lions. They, these two might be nomads without any females and cover big distances here across the Sand River and onto the Mara River. And powerful force, two male lines together. Let's see if we can get a, a closer shot without disturbing them too much. We can catch those eyes through the grass.
Okay guys, so Buffalo led us to these lions and uh, they're well fed, they're gonna go and rest now, so. Okay guys, welcome to Migration Update and today we're going to discuss the Great Migration. How does it work? Great Migration 101. Um, there are many questions for people who want to see the migration. When is the best time to come? Uh, where should I go? What, I, what can I see? And I'll just quickly run through everything. So the Great Migration or the Wildebeest Migration is not something that starts or stops. It's a continuous annual cycle uh, of about one and a half, one point six million wildebeest, two hundred, two hundred and fifty thousand uh, virtual zebra, Thompson's gazelle in Ireland. Those numbers are obviously a little bit less, and it's a journey from the southern Serengeti plains to the northern Serengeti, and then into the Masamara, and then back again in time for calving season. On the southern plains again so that's the constant the constant in this whole cycle is the Ser uh, southern serengeti plains where there's volcanic ash deposit and very nutritious new grass after the short rains that's where the migration and the wildebeest and zebra would always want to be but there's not a lot of rainfall the south eastern side of the serengeti or the southern plains get half the rainfall compared to the northwestern side where we are now on the Kokotende and on the maru river so as the southern plains dry out uh, and they dry out quite quickly they do hold surface water well but once that's gone uh, there's a very rapid deterioration of grazing value and no water to drink so the herds start their journey north then the, generally there's a split into the eastern herds the non-carving females breeding females and the bulls uh, non-breeding bulls go up the eastern side because they generally can walk faster they don't have little ones with them and then the breeding herds that move a little bit slower obviously just after calving they tend to head west into maswa where there's good water once and due to is uh, drying out then they move back and forth from hidden valley to cassini into maswa until those water sources are depleted then there's a push towards the central Serengeti or down the Mbalengeti Valley towards the western Serengeti and then that's where the herds are currently, just north of the Grumeti River. Then there could be crossings of the Grumeti River like this year when the Grumeti River has water or it's a dry riverbed crossing into Ikorongo and Grumeti Reserves. And then the western herds would arrive on the Mara River towards somewhere in July, sometimes, sometimes in June. Uh, and this year it looks towards the end of July that the herds would arrive on the western side, on the Maru River side. The eastern herds, they cross the Sand River earlier than the western herds. So those crossings normally would happen end May, in June. This time uh, those crossings will probably happen during July, um, a couple of weeks ago. The eastern herds are at Lobo at the moment. The western herds, some of them are north of the Grumeti, others are still south of the Grumeti River. Um, then the herds make a turn into the Masamara on the Kenyan side, maybe for a month, sometimes a little bit longer. But the size of the Masamara really is small compo uh, compared to the Serengeti. So you can come and witness the, uh, the migration and crossings all year round in the Serengeti. Uh, the highlights would be the calving season during February, March the Grumeti River and the rutting season during June into July and then the Mara River crossing that would happen in July, August, September and then sometimes crossings back again south uh, all the way until in October, early November. So that's a long period of time that you can come and visit and the movement in those in between months are also spectacular to see. So that's the migration in a nutshell 
um, contact us if you want to find out more and we're happy to answer any questions that you might have come and see the great migration it's spectacular it's a once in a lifetime thing it's the largest mammal migration left on earth today and it is absolutely mind-blowing it's something that's very hard to capture on film so although we will bring you the river crossings this year hopefully um, it is just something that you have to come and experience yourself chat to you later Okay guys, what a lovely day. We came all the way from the Bologonja side and Sand River side and spectacular views. That's the beauty of the north. It's hills and plains and riverine forest and lots of predators and plains game and complete solitude, which is spectacular. So that's it for us today. We're going to watch the sun go down and uh, Hope you enjoyed the show. So remember to subscribe uh, to our YouTube channel and hit that the note now button to get some Lucy to get some fuel into Lucy and the Land Cruiser. And then hopefully we can stay until the crossing season, um, which is probably a couple of weeks ago, two, three weeks from now. So uh, please support this project. It'll be awesome. <laughs>